And God does want to reveal his love to us, his comfort. He wants to guide us. Isaiah 66, 13, God says, As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. And in Psalm 32, 8, God says, I will counsel you and direct you in the way you should go. Once we accept Jesus as our Lord, he places the Holy Spirit within us, right, to guide us and to comfort us. I love the uh, Amplified translation of John 14, 16. The Amplified version just basically takes the, the original you know, Greek text or Hebrew text of the Bible and then just puts like all the different words that it, that it means. So this is the way it translates John 14, 16. Jesus is talking and he says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, and standby to be with you forever. Those are like all the words that describe the Holy Spirit's activity in our life, right? So why is it if God says he's going to counsel us and he's going to guide us and he's going to comfort us, why is it then that people struggle to hear comfort and guidance from God? I mean, why do sometimes we struggle? And three main reasons come to mind here. And the first one could be Maybe you haven't ever really made him the Lord of your life. I mean, if you're struggling to hear him, could it be that you've never really made him the Lord of your life? You know, John 8, 47 is a pretty, pretty convicting verse. It simply says this, whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear it is that you do not belong to God. That is a convicting verse, you know? But this is what the Bible says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Whoever, you know, whoever belongs to God hears what he says. So my question for you, have you ever really made that total heart decision to make Jesus your Savior and your Lord, the person that you've decided to follow? If you haven't done that before, just commit yourself right in this moment, just between you and God. Yes, I commit to follow you, Lord. I want you to be the Lord of my life. This is going to unclog your ears, you know, so you can hear him, so you can spiritually hear his voice. But secondly, and this can be a problem, it could be that you're in a pattern of intentional sin. A pattern of intentional sin, and that has put a wall between you and God. Here's another convicting verse. John 9, verse 31. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Now, we're all going to sin. I mean, don't get me wrong. We're all going to trip up and we're going to fall occasionally. But intentional sin is a different thing where you've decided, you know, I know God says this and that in his Bible, but, yeah, you know, I kind of really want to do my own thing. Maybe I'll do that someday, but not really right now. It's kind of getting in my way. And so I'm just going to do life the way I want to do it. And, but God should still answer my prayers. And that doesn't exactly work. And ask the Lord to forgive you. And ask him to give you strength to turn from that way. And that might right there open up a pathway where you haven't been able to hear God's voice. Thirdly, maybe you haven't been hearing his voice because you haven't been practicing the language. You haven't been practicing the language. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay, so like, let's say uh, at our house, I don't know why I didn't bring this, we have these Spanish, how to learn Spanish, like old-fashioned cassette tapes. That's probably why we'll never use them, because we don't have a cassette player anymore. I don't know if anyone has one of those things. But we, we have a stash of these, like, cassette tapes, how to learn Spanish. I've never listened to these things. Doggone it, I don't understand why I can't speak Spanish. I have these things in my hair, but I, I, I don't recognize Spanish. When you talk, guys talk Spanish to me, I don't know what you're saying. I can't speak Spanish. Well, because I've never practiced. It's just sitting there. And basically, that's what many of our Bibles do, is they just sit there collecting dust. You know what I mean? And then we wonder why we don't recognize God's voice. Why we aren't familiar with that language, it's because we haven't been into his word. That's when we start to recognize what he sounds like. When you become really familiar with his word because you've been listening to it, in the sense you've been reading it, you've been interacting with it, you start to recognize his voice. Okay, three primary ways to hear from God through prayer. First, when we pray for God to speak to us through his word, we just talked about that. When we pray for God to speak to us through the word, the Bible, 2 Timothy 3, 
All scripture is God-breathed, useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And Psalm 119 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. So again, are you spending time in God's word? This is a primary way that he will speak words of comfort to you and specific words of guidance even. There are so many days where I need comfort and I open the pages of the Bible, especially the Psalms, and God spoke to me through his word, those words of comfort that I needed to hear. There were so many times when I needed guidance and no, it's not gonna say, uh, yes, purchase that yellow house at 2600, uh, you know, Fremont Street. You know, it doesn't say that in the Bible if you're trying to make a real estate decision about what house to buy. But you will get general guidance from the Bible about prudence, you know, making a prudent decision, getting advisors, I mean, not being reckless, being patient. You'll get all sorts of other guidance from God's word that can help direct you no matter what decision you're making. So are you spending time in God's word? He will speak to you through his word. Secondly, when we quiet ourselves and pray for God to directly speak to our spirit through the Holy Spirit, when we quiet ourselves and pray for God to directly speak to our spirit through the Holy Spirit. In John 14, again, the Bible describes the Holy Spirit as the counselor, and he often whispers to us if we strain to listen. Uh, some of you are familiar with that little passage in 1 King, 1 Kings 19. Uh, it says, after the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. And this is how God often will speak to us. As we pause and we strain and we quiet ourselves, he will whisper to our spirits and we'll recognize it's him because we're so familiar with his voice because we've spent time in his word and, and his voice sounds very familiar to us. Again, caution here. If you think you hear God say something, check it against his word. He's not going to tell you to rob a bank. Positive about that because in his word, you're not supposed to steal. So I'm pretty sure he's not. If you hear that voice, it's not God. Um, but also it's, it's good to, to ask some godly people in your life, does this sound like God's voice. It's good to compare it against scripture and ask other godly people. And then a third way that God will speak to us, when others, when others who are seeking God in prayer receive a revelation from God, which is called prophecy. That is called prophecy. When someone gets a revelation from God and they share it, that's called prophecy. And this is something that I can see a little bit mysterious, I know, but it's in the Bible, and, and I know it to be real. 1 Corinthians 14 says, Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. 